Bienvenidos a La Oveja Eléctrica, el programa de ciencia y pensamiento de Canal 22, en donde hablaremos de la imaginación científica que viaja en globos para ampliar las posibilidades de Internet a lugares sin acceso a este medio de comunicación. ¿Qué tal, Pepe? ¿Qué tal, Silvina? Así es, en ciencia también se aplica eso que decía John Lennon. Podrás decir que soy un soñador, pero no soy el único que sueña. <risa> Y espero que un día nos acompañes, eso decía John Lennon. Y de esa imagen damos un salto a Frank Sinatra, quien nos dice, fly me to the moon, llévame a la luna. Eso también lo hace la ciencia, apunta a la luna. A eso se le llama en inglés, moonshot. Y eso es justamente lo que hace Mike Cassidy, un ingeniero en aeronáutica, director de Loom Project. Pepe Gordon estuvo en Mountain View, en California, en las oficinas internacionales de Google, desde donde nos trae una entrevista exclusiva con Mike Cassidy. En la segunda parte de esta conversación se plantea lo que implica el proyecto de globos transmisores de Internet en comparación con otro tipo de tecnologías. Nowadays you fight against what is usual, the, usually the technology that means fiber, uh, optical fiber and also a satellite. Mm -hmm. uh, how this is better, but what are the problems that you're still facing? Sure. So we don't think that any single technology or any single company is going to solve the problems of reaching all of these five billion people who don't have access. I think in some areas uh, where you know gigabit uh, fiber is available, that's fantastic. Um, but it, Of course, fiber is not available everywhere. Uh, also, communication satellites. I mean, I'm an aerospace engineer. I, I got my degree, uh, my bachelor's and master's degree in aerospace engineering, and I, I worked on communication satellites. Um, it's an incredibly great technology. Um, you know, from 20,000 miles up, you can beam down to large areas on the ground. But communication satellites typically cost hundreds of millions of dollars to develop and $100 million dollars plus to launch. They're designed to last 10 years or so. They take several years to build, maybe another year to launch. From the time someone starts thinking or working on a satellite till the end of its life is 13, 14 years. The technology at that point is, is quite old in this high-tech world we live in. One of the exciting things about the Project Loon network is the balloons last 100 days at altitude. So every 100 days we get a chance to put up a new network with potentially newer technology, newer electronics, uh, newer wireless protocols. So it's very fresh technology. We're excited about that. And it's not so expensive? Our mission is to bring internet to people who don't have it today. In many cases, they don't have it because it's unaffordable. Uh, in two out of the three countries south of the equator, The average monthly cost of internet is higher than the average monthly income of a citizen of that country. So it's absolutely not affordable for them. We're trying to design the balloons to be really low cost. We're using polyethylene plastic, which is not a very expensive plastic. We're trying to use off-the-shelf components for the electronics as much as we can. To try to bring down the cost of the balloons, uh, our goal is to bring it down to $1,000 per balloon which would then make the cost of the thousands of people that can be served by that to be affordable for as many people as possible. What's the reaction of the scientific community to this project? Um, we have been so thrilled by the response since we launched on June 15th. You know, it's a, it's a wonderful world we live in where people get information about new technology fast. Often it leads to a lot of people criticizing or bashing new technology. Um, but 99.9% of the res response we've gotten is excited and they use the word inspired. I, I got 850 emails the first day I came back to the office and in, I, I saw the word inspired so many times I did a count and there was over 100 emails had the word inspired in it. Um, I think it captures the imagination of scientists because it's, it's a technology that's accessible, it's a technology that's It's kind of fun, and um, there is physics in it, and there is um, you know, materials technology in it, and battery technology, and solar power, solar power technology. Um, 
and yet it's 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 for a great mission and a great cause. So the scientific community has been really excited about the technological breakthroughs we've made on them. Se trata de un proyecto que atrapa la imaginación científica. Seguiremos conversando sobre el tipo de pensamiento que mueve estos experimentos. Como de rayo estamos de regreso en la oveja eléctrica, en donde nos asomamos a globos que cruzan los límites geográficos para obtener señal de internet y nos hablan de una gran imaginación científica. Pepe Gordon conversó con Mike Cassidy, ingeniero en aeronáutica, director de Loom Project en Mountain View en las oficinas internacionales de Google en California, sobre el tipo de pensamiento que se juega en una propuesta de esta naturaleza. And this has to do also with something that is very ingrained in your culture, in your company's culture, that is called moonshot. Yes. What is a moonshot? So Google X. <laughs> is a group inside Google um, with a kind of special DNA. It's uh, sort of inventors, engineers, uh, entrepreneurial type people. And for us, a moonshot has three components. It's, um, it's a giant audacious goal impacting hundreds of millions or billions of people. The second thing is it has to have a radical solution. Uh, so radical that when you first hear of it, it sounds almost like science fiction. Um, and the third thing it has to have is, there's got to be some significant technological breakthrough that makes it possible that this science fiction-like sounding thing to be uh, achievable. And in this case, the technological breakthroughs were the altitude control we talked about, sort of fighting against that buoyancy, and the, the very complex control of these thousands of balloons free planning days ahead of time by moving them into the correct wind to get to the correct spot. Um, so those three things combined together, uh, the giant goal, the radical solution, and the technological breakthroughs make this a moonshot. This thing of thinking of the impossible. Yeah, there's been a lot of thoughts and comments written in Silicon Valley um, over the past few years where many people are are sad or upset about sort of the decline in big technological uh, stretches. Uh, you know, in the 60s, people in the United States got very excited about the Apollo program because it's, at the time it was proposed to send someone to the moon, everyone thought, wow, is that really possible? And there's a criticism given today that many of the companies are trying to make incremental improvements or coming out with sort of a slight variation on some other product um, instead of going for these big sort of technological innovations. So the popular response to this has been very warm and very excited that, that there is a group that's going out and, and trying to do these audacious uh, sort of goals. And at the beginning, it had to be kept secret by 18 months. Yes. That was very challenging. I didn't even tell my parents what I was working on. Um, so when we finally launched, I could tell my parents. And as we launched these balloons to test them in Central California, sometimes um, we worried that people would find one of our balloons. Um, in fact, several of our, our balloons were reported as UFOs, unidentified flying objects. <laughs> uh, and it was fun for us to sort of watch on TV. Another UFO was spotted, and <laughs> we like, that's our balloon. Um, but yeah, we were able to, for the most part, keep it... Um, keep yeah. it secret. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What would be the next step for you? Um, so we want to continue with another pilot test of the system. We're still sort of in early days of this. And for the next pilot test, we want to have the balloons fly over more countries. It, New Zealand was the first one. The next time, they're going to fly over, say, three or four countries. Um, we're going to make some improvements in the, in the internet on it. We're going to make some improvements on the, the duration of the balloons and some more improvements in the electronics. Uh, but so the next test, hopefully you'll see sort of balloons going uh, further and covering more countries. Un proyecto que parece de ciencia ficción. De ese tamaño es la imaginación que flota en estos globos que pretenden mejorar la comunicación por internet.
Seguiremos hablando de este interesante tema. Como de rayo estamos de regreso en la oveja eléctrica para hablar de la imaginación científica, de globos que flotan en el aire para poder comunicarnos por Internet sin fronteras. Son globos globales. Pepe Gordón conversa con Mike Cassidy, ingeniero en aeronáutica, director del Loom Project de Google, sobre la inspiración de esta propuesta que suena a ciencia ficción. When something big is starts, then new ideas come about. So you are receiving feedback that is incredible and maybe yeah. it's taking you farther than you thought. Absolutely. Um, out of those 850 emails I got that first day, there were emails from U.S. government uh, organizations, the ones that do the wind, the Commerce Department and NOAA. NOAA produces our winds, and they had some suggestions and advice for us and offers for further co collaboration. Uh, there was communication from over 20 different countries who were excited about having the balloons come to them next. Um, there was communication from various types of technologies that people thought would be a good fit for our balloon. And right now we were, we're doing a pilot test using the technology of one of those people who contacted us, um, which they had a great technology. So, yeah, it's an explosion of ideas, really cool people around the world. Uh, this kind of, this uh, product I'm talking about was from Germany, actually. Um, people around the world who are contacting us, wanting to work with us and wanting to partner with us. So it's very exciting. What was the inspiration of this project? You, you talked about science fiction. Yeah, so for Larry Page, the mission of Google has always been you know, to organize the world's information and make it easily accessible. Well, it can't possibly be easily accessible if two-thirds of the people don't even have internet access. So for Larry, I suspect his inspiration was actually getting this organized information out to many people. For Rich Duvall, he was actually working on a different type of technology that he wanted to bring to the world. And he was not aware that two-thirds of the people didn't have internet access. And so his inspiration was, wait a minute, this other technology I'm working on, I'm not even going to be able to reach two-thirds of the people. And that led him to start thinking, well, let's try this thing of taking a Wi-Fi transmitter and you know, put it on a latex balloon and see if it can reach the ground. The project is called Loom Project. Yeah. And it has two connotations. Please talk about it. Well, one of them is if you take the word balloon and sort of chop off the first half, you get the word loon. The other one is the word loon has a connotation uh, in English of being a little crazy, uh, a loony person. Um, and many people, when they first hear about the idea, think that's crazy. And in fact, when I first heard of the idea, I said, that's crazy. Um, but I'm an aerospace engineer, and I could do some of the calculations. And when I started talking to some of the people who were uh, thinking about this project, we started simulating the trajectories of the balloons and calculating the super pressure that would be required and the materials uh, that were available. The math and the physics actually works. And I became convinced that it's not crazy. You can actually do it. So you were not convinced at the beginning? No, the first time I heard of it, I thought it was crazy. <laughs> so Loon Project, Loon People take moonshots. Absolutely. And for ending this beautiful conversation, uh, you're a musician also. Oh, yeah. You're a jazz piano player. And when you're thinking about this whole dance of balloons, in which kind of music you're thinking? Because maybe there is some kind of rhythm that sure. is there. Um, well, I love jazz, and uh, my favorite jazz band is called the Yellow Jackets. Um, and they have some very intricate rhythms um, in their music. Uh, there's a song called Cape Town, um, which has some beautiful rhythms. So, yeah, I guess an analogy to the choreography of the balloons moving around would be similar to the rhythms in uh, the Yellow Jackets' Cape Town. <laughs> With that note, we end this interview. Thank you, thank you very much. Muchas gracias. <laughs>
concluimos esta interesante entrevista acerca de globos que pretenden comunicar al planeta mediante Internet de una manera más accesible para todos, con globos que bailan con la coreografía de la imaginación científica, con una danza de algoritmos que expanden el pensamiento y la capacidad de innovación. Mike Cassidy, director de Loom Project en la Oveja Eléctrica.